The upper respiratory tract comprises of all structures from the nose to the vocal cords, including the paranasal sinuses. There is mixed literature as to whether the larynx is part of the upper or lower respiratory tract. However, in this video, it would be regarded as part of the upper respiratory tract. The upper respiratory tract serves the function of warming and humidifying inspired air. So by the time it reaches the trachea, it is at body temperature and fully humidified. It also serves the function of entrapping any foreign particles that are larger than 10 micrometers in size, preventing them from reaching the lungs. The respiratory tract starts at the nasal cavity. Anterior apertures of the nasal cavity are the nares, or nostrils, and the posterior apertures, which lead to the nasopharynx, are the coani. The cavity is separated into two by the nasal septum, which is mostly composed of cartilage. If we cut a bit of bone uh, in front of the nose, we then have this image. Each side of the cavity has three concave are turbinates, the superior, middle, and inferior turbinates. These protrude into the nasal cavity and increase the surface area of contact with the respired air, which will aid in adjusting the temperature and humidity of the air before it reaches the lungs. The nasal meatuses are the spaces behind each concha. So we have the superior, middle, and inferior meatuses. Now, let's look at the nasal cavity and the nasal concave from a side view. At the top of the nasal cavity, we have the cribriform plate, a porous part of the ethmoid bone that allows the olfactory nerves to cross through to the olfactory bulb, allowing for the sense of smell. As of the blood supply, there are five main blood vessels that supply the nasal cavity. These are the superior labial artery, the greater palatine artery, the sphenopalatine artery, and the anterior and posterior ethmoidal arteries. These arteries anastomose, forming the Kesselbach plexus. This extensive blood supply is why nosebleeds can bleed a lot. The paranasal sinuses are air-filled cavities that surround the nasal cavity. There are four paranasal sinuses, the maxillary sinuses, the frontal sinuses, the ethmoidal sinuses, or also called ethmoidal air cells, and the sphenoid sinuses. The functions of these sinuses are to lessen the weight of the skull, offer resonance to the voice, and protect the brain from frontal trauma. The paranasal sinuses may be thought of as extensions of the nasal cavity as they have openings that connect to the nasal cavity. The maxillary sinuses and the frontal sinuses drain into the middle meatus. The sphenoid sinuses drain into the sphenoethmoidal recess, which is the space above the superior concha. As of the ethmoidal sinuses, the anterior air cells drain into the middle meatus, while the posterior air cells drain into the superior meatus. One additional duct that drains into the nasal cavity is the nasolacrimal duct. It is an extension of the lacrimal sac that extends into the inferior meatus. That is the reason why um, when you cry, you may have a runny nose because the um, tears drain into your nose. The nasal cavity gives way to the pharynx, which is commonly called the throat. The pharynx is divided into three. The nasopharynx, which extends from the base of the skull to the soft palate. The oropharynx, 
which extends from the soft palate to the epiglottis, and the laryngopharynx, which extends from the epiglottis to the esophagus. The nasopharynx contains the eustachian tube, which is a tube that connects to the middle ear. At the back of the nasopharynx, we have the pharyngeal tonsils, or adenoids. Tonsils are collections of lymphatic tissue. Around the opening of the eustachian tube, we also have the tubal tonsils. The oropharynx contains the palatine tonsils and the lingual tonsils. The laryngopharynx, which is also called the hypopharynx, is where the pharynx divides anteriorly to the larynx and posteriorly into the esophagus. The larynx is commonly called the voice box. It contains the vocal folds, which vibrate as the air flows through the larynx, producing the voice. The larynx is composed of several cartilages, which are held together by several ligaments, as shown in the following image. The cartilages that compose the larynx may be divided into paired and unpaired cartilages. The unpaired cartilages are the thyroid cartilage, depicted in blue, which is most easily visible in adult males as it forms the laryngeal prominence, or Adam's apple. The cricoid cartilage, depicted in green, and the epiglottis, depicted in purple. Now, the paired cartilages are the arytenoid cartilages, which provide attachment to the vocal folds and control their movement the corniculate cartilages, uh, which are minor structures that articulate together with the arytenoid cartilages. And we have the cuneiform cartilages, which are not present in this image, but act to strengthen the aryepiglottic folds. Here, in the superior view of the larynx, the cuneiform cartilages may be visualized. The larynx ends at the level of the cricoid cartilage, which is at the sixth cervical vertebra. Below the larynx, the trachea starts, and its structure, together with the whole lower respiratory tract, will be discussed in another video. Thank you for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed. Please leave a like and subscribe.